Deconstruction is a critical outlook concerned with the relationship between text and meaning. Jacques Derrida's 1967 work of Grammatology introduced the majority of ideas influential within deconstruction. According to Derrida and taking inspiration from the work of Ferdinand de Saussure, language as a system of signs and words only have meaning because of the contrast between these signs. As Rorty contends, words have meaning only because of contrast effects with other words. No word can acquire meaning in the way in which philosophers from Aristotle to Bertrand Russell have hoped it might by being the unmediated expression of something non-linguistic. As a consequence meaning is never present, but rather is deferred to other signs. Derrida refers to the, in this view, mistaken belief that there is a self-sufficient, non-deferred meaning as metaphysics of presence. A concept then must be understood in the context of its opposite, such as being, nothingness, normal, abnormal, speech, writing, etc. Finally, Derrida argues that it is not enough to expose and deconstruct the way oppositions work and then stop there in a nihilistic or cynical position thereby preventing any means of intervening in the field effectively. To be effective, deconstruction needs to create new terms, not to synthesize the concepts in opposition, but to mark their difference and eternal interplay. This explains why Derrida always proposes new terms in his deconstruction, not as a free play but as a pure necessity of analysis, to better mark the intervals. Derrida called undecidables, that is, unities of simulacrum, false, verbal properties that can no longer be included within philosophical opposition, but which, however, inhabit philosophical oppositions, resisting and organizing it, without ever constituting a third term, without ever leaving room for a solution in the form of Hegelian dialectics. In the 1980s, the postmodernism era, deconstruction was being put to use in a range of theoretical enterprises in the humanities and social sciences, including law anthropology, historiography, linguistics, sociolinguistics, psychoanalysis, feminism, and LGBT studies. In the continental philosophy tradition, debates surrounding ontology, epistemology, ethics, aesthetics, hermeneutics, and philosophy of language still refer to it today. Within architecture it has inspired deconstructivism, and it remains important in general within art, music, and literary criticism. Etymology Derrida's original use of the word deconstruction was a translation of destruction, a concept from the work of Martin Heidegger that Derrida sought to apply to textual reading. Heidegger's term referred to a process of exploring the categories and concepts that tradition has imposed on a word and the history behind them. Derrida opted for deconstruction over the literal translation destruction to suggest precision rather than violence. Deconstruction according to Derrida, basic philosophical concerns Derrida's concerns flow from a consideration of several issues, a desire to contribute to the revaluation of all Western values built on the 18th century Kantian critique of reason, and carried forward to the 19th century in its more radical implications by Kierkegaard and Nietzsche an assertion that texts outlive their authors and become part of a set of cultural habits equal to, if not surpassing, the importance of authorial intent, a revaluation of certain classic Western dialectics, poetry versus philosophy, reason versus revelation, structure versus creativity, episteme versus Techna, etc. Like Nietzsche, Derrida suspects Plato of dissimulation in the service of a political project, namely the education, through critical reflections, of a class of citizens more strategically positioned to influence the polis. However, like Nietzsche, Derrida is not satisfied merely with such a political interpretation of Plato. 
Because of the particular dilemma modern humans find themselves stuck in, his platonic reflections are inseparably part of his critique of modernity, hence the attempt to be something beyond the modern. Because of this Nietzschean sense that the modern has lost its way and become mired in nihilism, Difference Difference is an important idea within deconstruction. It is the observation that the meanings of words come from their synchronity with other words within the language and their diachrony between contemporary and historical definitions of a word. Understanding language according to Ritter required an understanding of both viewpoints of linguistic analysis. The focus on diachronity has led to accusations against Derrida of engaging in the etymological fallacy. There is one statement by Derrida which has been of great interest to his opponents and which appeared in an essay on Rousseau. It is the assertion that there is no outside text which is often mistranslated as there is nothing outside of the text. The mistranslation is often used to suggest Derrida believes that nothing exists but words. Michel Foucault, for instance, famously misattributed to Derrida the very different phrase Il en nd horse detects for this purpose. According to Derrida, his statement simply refers to the unavoidability of context that is at the heart of difference. For example, the word house derives its meaning more as a function of how it differs from shed mansion, hotel, building, etc., than how the word house may be tied to a certain image of a traditional house with each term being established in reciprocal determination with the other terms than by an ostensive description or definition. When can we talk about a house or a mansion or a shed? The same can be said about verbs in all the languages in the world. When should we stop saying walk and start saying run? The same happens, of course, with adjectives. When must we stop saying yellow and start saying orange or exchange past for present? Not only are the topological differences between the words relevant here, but the differentials between what is signified is also covered by difference. Thus, complete meaning is always differential and postponed in language. There is never a moment when meaning is complete and total. A simple example would consist of looking up a given word in a dictionary, then proceeding to look up the words found in that word's definition, etc. Also comparing with older dictionaries from different periods in time, and such a process would never end. Metaphysics of presence to Ritter describe the task of deconstruction as the identification of metaphysics of presence or logocentrism in Western philosophy. Metaphysics of presence is the desire for immediate access to meaning, the privileging of presence over absence. This means that there is an assumed bias in certain binary oppositions where one side is placed in a position of one over another, such as good over bad, speech over the written word, male over female among other oppositions. Derrida writes, without a doubt, Aristotle thinks of time on the basis of ausia as parousia, on the basis of the now, the point, etc., and yet an entire reading could be organized that would repeat in Aristotle's text both this limitation and its opposite, to Derrida the central. Bias of logocentrism was the now being placed as more important than the future or past. This argument is largely based on the earlier work of Heidegger, who in Being in Time claimed that the theoretical attitude of pure presence is parasitical upon a more originary involvement with the world in concepts such as the ready to hand and being with related works by Derrida. Derrida published a number of works directly relevant to the concept of deconstruction. If Grammatology was the book that introduced the idea of deconstruction, Derrida went on to write many other books showing deconstruction in action or defining it more completely such as difference, speech and phenomena and writing and difference. Application of deconstruction. Derrida's observation have had a large influence on literary criticism and post-structuralism. Literary criticism Derrida's method consisted in demonstrating all the forms and varieties of the originary complexity of semiotics, and the multiple consequences in many fields. 
His way of achieving this was by conducting thorough, careful, sensitive, and yet transformational readings of philosophical and literary texts, with an ear to what in those texts runs counter to their apparent systematicity or intended sense. By demonstrating the apparary as an ellipse is a thought, Derrida hoped to show the infinitely subtle ways that this originary complexity, which by definition cannot ever be completely known, works its structuring and destructuring effects. Deconstruction denotes the pursuing of the meaning of a text to the point of exposing the supposed contradictions and internal oppositions upon which it is founded, supposedly showing that those foundations are irreducibly complex, unstable, or impossible. It is an approach that may be deployed in philosophy, in literary analysis, and even in the analysis of scientific writings. Deconstruction generally tries to demonstrate that any text does not a discrete whole but contains several irreconcilable and contradictory meanings, that any text therefore has more than one interpretation, that the text itself links these interpretations inextricably, that the incompatibility of these interpretations is irreducible, and thus that an interpretative reading cannot go beyond a certain point. Derrida refers to this point as an aporia in the text thus. Deconstructive reading is termed aporetic. He insists that meaning is made possible by the relations of a word to other words within the network of structures that language is. Derrida initially resisted granting to his approach the overarching name deconstruction on the grounds that it was a precise technical term that could not be used to characterize his work generally. Nevertheless, he eventually accepted that the term had come into common use to refer to his textual approach, and Derrida himself increasingly began to use the term in this more general way. Critique of Structuralism Derrida's lecture at Johns Hopkins University, Structure, Sign, and Play in the Human Sciences, often appears in collections as a manifesto against structuralism. Derrida's essay was one of the earliest to propose some theoretical limitations to structuralism, and to attempt to theorize on terms that were clearly no longer structuralist. Structuralism viewed language as a number of signs composed of a signified and a signifier. Derrida proposed that signs always referred to other signs existing only in relation to each other, and there was therefore no ultimate foundation or center. This is the basis of difference. Development after Derrida The Yale School Between the late 1960s and the early 1980s many thinkers were influenced by deconstruction, including Paul de Man, Jeffrey Hartman, and J. Hillis Miller. This group came to be known as the Yale School and was especially influential in literary criticism. Several of these theorists were subsequently affiliated with the University of California Irvine. Miller has described deconstruction this way. Deconstruction is not a dismantling of the structure of a text, but a demonstration that it has already dismantled itself. Its apparently solid ground is no rock, but thin air. Critical legal studies movement arguing that law and politics cannot be separated. The founders of critical legal studies movement found necessary to criticize its absence of the level of theory. To demonstrate the indeterminacy of legal doctrine, these scholars often adopt a method, such as structuralism in linguistics or deconstruction in continental philosophy, to make explicit the deep structure of categories and tensions at work in legal texts and talk. The aim was to deconstruct the tensions and procedures by which they are constructed, expressed, and deployed. For example, Duncan Kennedy, in explicit reference to semiotics and deconstruction procedures, maintains that various legal doctrines are constructed around the binary pairs of opposed concepts, each of which with the claim upon intuitive and formal forms of reasoning that must be made explicit, not only in their meaning but also its relative value, and criticized self and other, private and public, subjective and objective, freedom and control are examples of such pairs demonstrating the influence of this opposing concepts on the development of legal doctrines through history. Deconstructing history Deconstructive readings of history and sources have changed the entire discipline of history. 
In Deconstructing History, Alan Munslow examines history in what he argues is a postmodern age. He provides an introduction to the debates and issues of postmodernist history. He also surveys the latest research into the relationship between the past, history, and historical practice, as well as forwarding his own challenging theories. The inoperative community Jean-Luc Nancy argues in his 1982 book The Inoperative Community for an Understanding of Community and Society that is, undeconstructable because it is prior to conceptualization. Nancy's work is an important development of deconstruction because it takes the challenge of deconstruction seriously and attempts to develop an understanding of political terms that is undeconstructable and therefore suitable for a philosophy after Derrida. The Ethics of Deconstruction Simon Critchley argues in his 1992 book The Ethics of Deconstruction that Derrida's deconstruction is an intrinsically ethical practice. Critchley argues that deconstruction involves an openness to the other that makes it ethical in the Levin Asian understanding of the term. Derrida and the political Jacques Derrida has had a huge influence on contemporary political theory and political philosophy. Derrida's thinking has inspired Slavoj Zizek, Richard Rorty, Ernesto Laclau, Judith Butler and many more contemporary theorists developed a deconstructive approach to politics. Because deconstruction examines the internal logic of any given text or discourse it helped many authors to analyze the contradictions inherent in all schools of thought. And as such it has proved revolutionary in political analysis, particularly ideology critiques. Richard Beardsworth, developing on Critchley's Ethics of Deconstruction, argues in his 1996 Derrida and the Political that deconstruction is an intrinsically political practice. He further argues that the future of deconstruction faces a choice between a theological approach and a technological approach represented first of all by the work of Bernard Stiegler.